about Saturn's ring since telescopes were invented in the 1600s. It took a spacecraft and more powerful telescopes built in the last 50 years to reveal more. We now know that every planet in our solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune is have ring systems. That said, rings are very different from planet to planet. Saturn's spectacular rings, which may have come from a broken up moon, are not repeated anywhere else. Rings aren't limited to planets either. In 2014, for example, astronomers' rings were discovered around the asteroid cyclone. Why such a small body would have rings is a mystery. But one hypothesis is perhaps a broken amulet created the fragments. Saturn's northern hemisphere has a ringing six-sided storm nicknamed the hexagon. Why exactly it's that shape is a mystery. But what is known is that this hexagon, which shares several features in common with hurricanes, has been there for at least decades, if not hundreds of years. Lightning conditions in Saturn's northern hemisphere began to improve in 2012, when Saturn approached its northern summer solstice. Cassini will continue observing the feature until the end of its mission in 2017, at the height of the solstice. What well, seems quite now, we know that in the past, something caused the gigantic volcanoes to form and erupt. This includes Olympus Mons, the biggest volcano ever discovered in the solar system. At 374 miles, 602 kilometers across, the volcano is comparable to the size of Arizona. It's 16 miles, 25 kilometers high, or triple the height of Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on Earth. Volcanoes on Mars can grow to such immense size because gravity is much weaker on the red planet than it is on Earth. But how those volcanoes came to be in the first place? is not well known. There is a debate as to whether Mars has a global plate tectonic system as whether it is active. So far, scientists have found no evidence that life exists elsewhere in the solar system. But as we learn more about how extreme microbes live in underwater, volcanic vents or in frozen environments, more possibilities open up for where they could live on other planets. These aren't the aliens. People once feared lived on Mars. But microbial life in the solar system is a possibility. Microbial life is now considered so likely on Mars that scientists take special precautions to sterilize spacecraft before sending them over there. That's not only place though. With several icy moons scattered around the solar system, it's possible there are microbes somewhere in the ocean of Jupiter's Europa, or perhaps underneath the ice at Saturn's Enceladus, among other locations. If you thought the Grand Canyon was big, there's nothing compared to Bell's Mineries. At 2,500 miles, 4,000 kilometers long, this immense system of Martian canyons is more than 10 times as long as the Grand Canyon on Earth. Bell's Mariner is escaped the notice of early Mars spacecraft, which flew over other parts of the planet, and was finally spotted by the global mapping mission Mariner 9 in 1971. And what a sight it was to miss! Bell's Mariner is about as long as the United States. The lack of active tectonic plates on Mars make it tough to figure out how the canyon formed. Some scientists even think that a chain of volcanoes on the other side of the planet, known as the Tharsisiris, somehow bent the crust from the opposite side of Mars. Thus creating Bell's Mariners, more clues of study is needed to learn more, but you cannot send a rover over there easily. is a hellish planet with a high temperature, high pressure environment on its surface. Ten of the Soviet Union's heavily shielded Venera spacecraft lasted only a few minutes on its surface when they landed there in the 1970s. But even above its surface, 
the planet has a bizarre environment. Scientists have found that its upper winds flow 50 times faster than the planet's rotation. The European Venus Express spacecraft, which orbited the planet between 2006 and 2014, tracked the winds over long periods and detected periodic variations. It also found that the hurricane force winds appeared to be getting stronger over time. For many years, scientists believed that Earth was the only tectonically active planet in the solar system. That changed after the Mercury surface. Space environment geochemistry and ranging in spacecraft did the first orbital mission at Mercury, mapping the entire planet in high definition and getting a look at the features on its surface. In 2016, data from ranging which had crashed into Mercury as planned in April 2015, revealed cliff like landforms known as fault scars. Because the fault scars are relatively small, scientists are sure that they were not created that long ago. And that planet is still contracting 4.5 billion years after the solar system was formed. Pluto's observed atmosphere broke all the predictions. Scientists saw the haze extending as high as 1000 miles, rising higher above the surface than the atmosphere on Earth. As data from New Horizons flowed in, scientists analyzed the haze and discovered some surprises that are true. Scientists found about 20 layers in Pluto's atmosphere that are both cooler and more compact than expected. This affects calculations for how quickly Pluto loses its nitrogen atmosphere to space. NASA's New Horizons team found that the tons of nitrogen gases kept the dark planet by the hour. But somehow Pluto is able to constantly resupply that lost nitrogen. The dark planet is likely creating more of it through geological activity. Along with being the solar system's largest planet, Jupiter also hosts the solar system's largest storm, known as the Great Red Spot. It's been observed in telescopes since the 1600s. Nobody knows exactly why this storm has been raging for centuries. But in recent decades, another mystery emerged. This part is getting smaller. In 2014, the storm was only 10,250 miles across. About half of what was measured historically. The shrinkage is being monitored in professional telescopes and also by amateurs. As telescope and computer technology allow high-powered photographs at an affordable cost, amateurs are often able to make more consistent measurements of Jupiter. Because viewing time are larger, professional telescopes is limited and often split between different objects. <music> Neptune is far away from Earth. And you can bet that sometime scientists would like to get another spacecraft out there soon. Perhaps today's technology could better answer some Neptunian mysteries, such as why the blue planet is giving up more heat than it receives. It's bizarre, considering that Neptune is so far away from the faint sun. Scientists would like to know what's going on, because it's believed that the vast temperature differential could affect weather processes on the planet. NASA estimates the temperature difference between the heat source and the cloud tops is minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit. The Sun and the planets likely formed from the same cloud of hydrogen and helium gas. This would especially be true of Jupiter, a planet 317 times the size of Earth that pulled in a lot more gas than our own planet. So if that's the case, why does Jupiter have more heavy rock elements than the Sun? One of the leading theories is that Jupiter's atmosphere is enriched by the comets, asteroids and other small rocky bodies that it pulls in with its gravitational field. Since amateur technology has improved, several small bodies have been seen falling into Jupiter in the past.
methane is a substance that is produced by life or by natural processes such as volcanic activity. But why it keeps fluctuating so much on Mars is a mystery. Various telescopes and space probes have found different levels of methane on Mars over the years, making it hard to chart where this substance is coming from. It's unclear if the varying levels of methane are due to telescopic differences or differences in the amount of methane coming from the surface. NASA's Curiosity rover even detected a spike in methane during one Martian year. They didn't repeat the next, indicating whatever it saw was not seasonal. It will likely take more long-term observations of Mars to fully figure out the mystery. Uranus appears to be a featureless blue ball upon first glance, but this gas giant of the outer solar system is pretty weird upon closer inspection. First, the planet rotates on its side for reasons scientists haven't quite figured out. The most likely explanation is that it underwent some sort of one or more titanic collisions in the past. In any case, the tilt makes Uranus unique among the solar system planets. Uranus also has Kinoos rings which were confirmed when the planet passed in front of a star in 1977. As the star slide went on and off repeatedly, astronomers realized that there was more than just a planet block blocking its starlight. More recently, astronomers spotted storms in Uranus. Atmosphere several years after its closest approach to the sun, when the atmosphere would have been heated the most. Exoplanets are so far away and so small in our telescopes that it's difficult to see very much detail in our atmospheres. But by looking at the chemistry of Jupiter, for example, we can make some predictions about gas giants further afield. If you look at Earth and Neptune, we can get a better sense of a range of planetary sizes on which life could exist. And even looking at where water freezes in our own solar system can help us better understand the ice line in other locations. We can measure vast distances across the universe by looking at things, such as standard candles, a type of exploding stars that tend to have the same luminosity which makes it easier to predict how far away they are from us. At any rate, looking at our neighborhood, we have been able to figure out we are nowhere near the Milky Way galaxy center. We are about 165 quadrillion miles away from the center supermassive black hole. NASA says which is probably a good thing. for watching this video don't forget to subscribe and react and i will see you guys next time